How you doing everybody? It's uh, it's Wednesday the 7th of July 2010 and it's in the evening, it's about 9 o'clock in the evening and I've, I've been working hard, I've not had a chance to do one of these videos over the last couple of days. Uh, I just wanted to touch on a major article, I think it's a major article anyway, in yesterday's Irish Times. Sometimes what happens is, I don't know how it happens, but sometimes uh, you see these things and it's sort of like the truth sort of is is let out as it were and this is an article a front page article by uh, the Irish Times major European correspondent a fella called Arthur Beasley he's a big young fella he's in his mid 30s and he's their correspondent in Brussels their major political correspondent and uh, he did an article I've put a link to the article and you'll see what it is basically what it is it centers around uh, this toxic bank that we have, this Anglo-Irish bank. And basically we own it, the Irish people now own it, outright. And so far we've put 14 billion euros into it. And it turns out that it's a black hole. Now, I've been saying this for nearly two years. And in saying this, you alienate a lot of people, a lot of people get upset about it and all the rest of it, okay. But basically, basically, is an interesting character because what's happening here is he's based in Brussels from what I can make out and he's getting information from two sources the two primary sources he'd be getting information from maybe three would be he would get them from the, the Irish members of the European Parliament that's number one he'd be getting information from the official information from the Irish state the ministers and all the rest of it and their PR people and then He'd be getting the truth and the truth would be coming out of non-irish uh, commissioners in brussels and also non-irish members of the european parliament so that's what would be happening so he'd be getting it from both sides you're getting the best of both worlds as it were and in the middle of this article he just says it like it is i say this article is about ireland making an application for another eight billion to pay in anglo-irish all right and in order to do that, it had to draw up a sort of a business plan, okay? And when you read down, it's the fifth or sixth little paragraph down. It's very easy to come across. It just says it like it is. Anglo-Irish is a prime participant in the National Asset Management Agency scheme, NAMA. You know, NAMA, we talked about it. The bank, the bank that they set up here. So-called bank, they're putting all the, all the toxic stuff into so that the, the our, our banks what they call our banks <sighs> anyway there are banks when they're in debt when they're making loads of money they're their banks okay usual story but anyway it says anglo uh, prime participant in the nama scheme has so far received more than 14 billion from the Irish state and may require at least another 8 billion most of the money will never be recouped that's the clincher most of the money will never be recouped yeah this is the little article here uh, on the front page of the irish times and you can see it there eu expressed doubts over anglo and there's a little part that i've highlighted but the whole article is worth reading. Uh, if you get a chance, I suggest we do that. Okay? Thanks very much. And the Europeans pointed out very, very clearly. They say, The Commission has doubts regarding the new bank's capacity to penetrate different market segments without undercutting price and without accumulating excessive risks. Further information will thus be needed to provide evidence that the new business plans targeted by the bank will possibly contribute to its viability. In other words, Paddy's, you bullshitted us long enough. We're probably going to have to give you the money because you've us over a bit of a barrel at the minute. But we're giving you this money reluctantly. And the first opportunity we get to give you the how's your father, we're going to give it to you right, good and proper. That's what the Europeans are saying to us here. You have to read this article. Very interesting article. In other words, all that bullshit stuff that you come off with, all that cheap fucking cute that you have in Ireland, 
with your run around all that uh, you know all that stuff it doesn't work there they've seen all that before don't be trying to bullshit with them boys we're going to get this money because we owe the Germans 224 billion that's what we owe the Germans it's their small banks our landless banks we owe them they're going to give us the money because they'll have to keep giving us some money if they want to get long term they want to get that, that 224 billion back but that's the situation now just have a read that article I think it's fascinating it gives you a massive insight of what's going on in Ireland the other thing I want to talk to you about very very briefly is remember I told you about Sean Fitzpatrick the disgraced boss of Anglo-Irish I told you he was never going to go to the poker he's never going to go to jail nothing's, nothing's going to happen to Sean Fitzpatrick all right they'll make all sorts of shenanigans and set up all sorts of things and maybe even court cases please believe me this man is not going anywhere they have a patsy there's the patsy there see that fella there see that lad there that's their patsy a fella called david drone he was the anglo Irish chief executive For about two years, something like that. I'll look it up, I'll check it out. Right? How long he was a chief executive for? Short period of time. Right? What happened was Shawnee Fitzpatrick done it Danny to one side. They made him chairman. I think he was non executive chairman or executive, doesn't matter. He was off on the one side. They appointed this Patsy. And he's the one's gonna they're gonna go for the juggler for him. They're gonna do a hang drawn a quarter job on this fella. Big time. Mark my words. That's how it works in Ireland. They get the patsy and then they go to war on him. And the other thing I want to talk about, which is hard to check there, an article in yesterday's uh, Independent, I put a link to it, Irish Independent, and it talks about the loss of 900 high tech jobs. And these are not normal jobs. These are men from the top level of tertiary education. These are men with doctorates, PhDs in their subject. And between at the beginning of this year and at the beginning of next year, so over a period of about 14 months, 15 months, 900 of them are going to lose their jobs. All right. And I've put the link. Have a read of the article. All right. Fascinating little article. And then alongside it, now this is this is aligned with the business, our our uh, all the, all the good and the mighty, in the political sense in the political world here, are telling us about. We want a smart economy, some fucking smart economy that is, isn't it? Nine hundred PhDs are going to get the get the kick. They'll be on the dole. Well, obviously they won't, because they're going to have to go to the end of the rest of the world, and look for work. But. Uh, Anyway, where is that article? I'll have to find it here. Here it is here. I'll put a link to this one. You can have a read of this. This is so nine hundred people with PhDs are going to lose their job. And seven hundred and twenty five jobs are going to be created. Three hundred of the seven hundred and twenty five jobs, what are they going to be doing? They're going to be working in service stations on motorways. Filling up filling up uh, cars and serving out buns, you know them and and coffee. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. It's very honourable profession. Nothing wrong with that. It's hardly sustainable, is it? It's hardly the things that are, uh, uh, economies are built on. Okay. Next one. Another four hundred and twenty are going to be created. What are they going? They're call. They call them here high quality jobs in Dublin. And what are they going to be doing? Do you know what they're going to be doing? They're going to provide technical support from across Europe in 16 languages for a leading manufacturer of video game consoles. Smart economy. 